So I forgot to record this earlier. I put it at the beginning of the video. I want to do a subscriber photo editing video. So there's a Google Drive link in the description down below where you can submit a portrait or a landscape or whatever. I prefer it to be an unedited raw file if you can or an unedited, unedited JPEG so I can show you what I would do in editing that photo. I said about this on my community tab and there was a couple comments that were interested. Even if I only get one submission, that's cool. I just thought it'd be something fun to do. So that's in the description down below the Google Drive folder. I'll have it labeled or whatever. Submit your photo and I'll eventually do that photo editing video. Thank you if you do that and enjoy the rest of this video. Bye. guys it's Matt back here with another video today we're talking about the Fujifilm XE2 which has been my personal carry around camera for the past four or five months or so time has been flying by with the spring semester at college but um yeah this has been my answer to let me tell you a little bit of a story here my first camera whenever I joined the Fujifilm system was the Fujifilm X-T3 and I'm filming on two of them right now that's my really my standard for like what I you know I'm used to for a Fujifilm camera so whenever you know I use my X-T3s professionally and they're great for that but I don't necessarily want to be carrying around my $800 camera every day when I just want to do casual photography I just in case it gets you know damaged or stolen or, or whatever so my first answer to this I bought was a Fujifilm X-Pro1 which I have a review of that here um, so at first I got an X-Pro1, but and I really did like the X-Pro1. I like the X-Trans1 sensor, but I found that I wanted my secondary like walk around casual camera. I wanted it to be smaller. The X-Pro1 is basically the same size as the X-T3. It's kind of big and blocky. So my answer to this was then I bought a Fujifilm X-T10, which I reviewed that here. So then I had the X-Trans2 sensor, which I really liked, which we're getting to this here. This also has the X-Trans2 sensor. The X-T10, I really liked. It was smaller and more compact than the X-Pro1. It also sort of had the X-T3 sort of style, but um, I eventually ended up selling my X-Pro1 and keeping the X-T10 for a short while, and uh, I eventually did sell that off. I ended up getting a X-100F, um, and then I ended up deciding whenever I was trying to downsize and not just have so many cameras I tried to sell off the X100F and I was sent an X100 original by one of my friends Frank uh, so that's another one of my compact cameras but I'm getting off topic here this is kind of my just my experience with Fujifilm cameras so you know what I'm about and what my search was coming to this I decided even though I didn't end up keeping the X-Pro1 or the X-T10, I really liked different aspects of them. I liked actually the rangefinder style of the X-Pro1, and I liked the small compactness of the X-T10. So the X-E2 was the perfect in-between camera that has the rangefinder style of the X-Pro1 and a lot of the same layout of the X-Pro1, but it has the small compactness of the X-T10. Even to almost a detriment I think whenever like I always carry uh, the, this XE2 with the grip I bought uh, uh, the the whatever the first party Fujifilm grip for it it was super cheap because it's uh, an old camera it's so much more comfortable with it it's, it's a, it feels about like an X-Pro1 in the hand maybe a little bit smaller with the grip but just like the X-T10 I find that it's a little too small and uncomfortable to hold without the grip but that's great for you know it being compact and it's great that you can take that away if you if you want to that was something I do kind of miss about the X-T10 um, whenever I try to take these X-T3s with me and I'm just walking around I just wish it could be a little bit smaller but I just don't have that option it is what it is but this even though it's people like to complain that you know you have to get a grip to have the full functionality of the camera there is kind of an argument for it in this case I think for how I use this camera which is I, I want it to be small whenever I'm just walking around. But like I said, I came from the X-T3 and there are noticeable differences in the build quality and just the layout of this camera. Um, like I said, it's, it's kind of like the X-Pro1 in a way, but it's a little bit different in that a lot, a lot of people like about the X-Pro1 that the whole layout and everything you need is off to the right side. So you basically can operate the camera entirely with your right hand and not even use your left hand. You can just put that on the lens or whatever. But with the X-E2, the layout is a little bit different where essential buttons are on the left hand side. So I do have to constantly be using both hands, but it's not that big of a deal. It's, it's mainly uh, the playback button that's on the left hand side, which 
it would be just so much nicer if it was on the right hand side so I didn't have to constantly be using my left hand. I could, it could be a one-handed camera, but I'm generally a two-handed shooter anyway. That's just something I hear a lot of people talk about, so I figured I'd bring it up. Also, like the X-Pro One, it has flat buttons, but they're a lot smaller, so it took some getting used to where the buttons are almost flush to the camera, but they're a lot smaller than the, X, than the X-Pro One, where they're a little bit harder to find, but it, it, it's easy to get used to. It also has a rear, uh, a plastic rear dial. Um, my X-Pro One had an issue where it didn't work properly. The X-T10 also had a plastic rear dial. Um, but it was slightly different than this one. This one has a uh, slightly different texture on it, which is no different. It works just fine, but that is, like I said, coming from the X-T3, a little bit of a downgrade. It, the X-T3 has a nice metal rear, rear dial and a front dial as well. Um, but other than that, the buttons, the buttons don't feel bad. Like I just said, they're just a little bit small and flat. It's also nice that it has a built-in flash. So that's something fun. It's not like a... It's not like the X100 series where it has a leaf shutter so you can flash sync at any speed. So I think you have to have it at certain shutter speeds to use the flash properly. But it's nice that it has that, I guess, if you're in that in a dire situation or um, you're probably not shooting something professionally if you're using the built-in flash on your camera. But it's a nice little feature to have. The shutter speed dial on top doesn't lock down, but I've never found that I've bumped it. And I shoot fully manually, so I haven't noticed anything with bumping the EV compensation dial but I, I always have my EV compensation dial set at zero just for like some OCD reason. And I never really find that it's bumped off of zero that, that often. So the dials on top, even though neither of them lock down, I don't find that I bump them around too much. So that's not much of an issue. Um, what else about the physical aspects? It was when this grip was on the way when I just shot with the XE2 on a tripod by itself. I was trying to move it on the tripod and it felt like where the, the tripod plate was mounted in just to, to the camera itself. It felt like it was flimsy and not really locked down. So I recommend if you're shooting on a tripod to just get the extra grip just to have that sturdiness. It's just, I can't believe that it was like so plasticky and, and flimsy feeling. I really didn't like that. Also a noticeable step down, just like build quality from the X-T3 in terms of like the metal part up top here. And even the X100 series, even the X100 original, feels a little bit nicer. This this has like, it's metal up here, but it's like, I don't know how to describe it other than like plasticky metal. It's similar to the X-T10 in that way. So, okay, that's a that's plenty, that's all you need to know about the physical build of this. Like I said, that's me coming from an X-T3 perspective. If you're coming from like a beginner photographer's perspective where you just had a like a very beginner camera and you're going to this, it's probably gonna feel a lot more premium than what you're used to, but the X-T3 is particularly pretty nice. Um, but I do have to say, we're about to go on to the image quality section. I do forgive all of the downsides, the things that I said that sounded like I was kind of ragging on this camera. I forgive all, the, all of those when it comes to the image quality because that's what's really worth it in the end. That's, I mean, that's what's really the whole point of using the camera is, is to get the image. Um, but even though Fujifilm makes the, the process of taking the image nice, um, I'm able to forgive these, these downsides of this camera because it produces really nice images. It has the X-Trans 2 sensor, which, like I said, I've tried all of the X-Trans sensors. I had the X-Pro1, so I have the X-Trans 1 sensor, and then this X-E2 and the X-T10, so I've had the X-Trans 2 sensor, and then with the X-100F, I had the X-Trans 3 sensor, and then I had the X-T3s, which had the X-Trans 4 sensor. Um, I really like the X-Trans 1 and 2 sensors. A lot of people lean t more towards X-Trans 1. Um, I actually like the X-Trans 2 a little bit better. It doesn't, I think it has about the same low light noise performance. I found that the X-Trans 3 sensor doesn't have that great low light, night, low light noise performance. The X-Trans 4 is pretty good as well. But uh, between, the low light noise performance is about the same as the X-Trans 1, but I find that you're able to push the raw files a little bit more on the X-Trans 2 sensor files. So I can bring back the highlights a little bit more, bring back the shadows a little bit more, which to me is important because I'm shooting landscapes and I'm not using like gradient ND filter, ND filters to get the, the sky and the, the landscape uh, exposed 
in camera so I'm, I'm like often just bring uh, up the shadows and down the highlights and it's important that I have that little bit more of dynamic range so I, I appreciate that that the X trans 2 sensor just a slight little bit more than the X trans 1 sensor which is why I don't have an XE1 very beautiful images you can push the files a little bit more than the X trans 1 sensor like I said and it's not really much more to say about that it has the Fujifilm colors like I said I shoot fully manually and I also shoot fully raw I shoot fully raw. Um, a lot of people say that Fujifilm has really great JPEGs, and you might want to kill me for saying this, but I never shoot JPEGs. I just, I find that I, I I'm just not into the, the tweaking and stuff. I'd rather just tweak it manually and post, and that's just how my workflow is and what I'm used to. And But I still do see a difference between the X-Trans uh, sensor generations in terms of, of colors and, and the, like Provia is different on X-Trans 1 than it is on X-Trans 4. And the same thing with the X100 original camera, which I was sent to by Frank. Thank you, Frank. Um, that Provia is even different than any of the other Provias. So it's like each generation, the different film simulations, even if they're named the same, are just slightly different. And that's just, it's just how it is. And that's what's interesting about making me want to get all these different Fujifilm cameras and a lot of people are the same way. Um, it has the great, it has great color science. So the X-Trans 2 sensor, if you've had any camera with that, if you've had the X-T1 or the X-T10 or I don't even know what else has the X-Trans 2 sensor, but uh, the X-Pro2, any of those, um, it has the same image quality as all of those, but this is probably the cheapest camera with the X-Trans 2 sensor, I do believe. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below. My overall thoughts, like I said in the build quality section, it has drawbacks if you're coming from a camera that is really high quality and really nice and tactile, nice to the touch with b buttons and dials and stuff, is a slight downgrade. I don't know if I mentioned, but it also has a pretty small viewfinder. But if you can see past that and the other downsides, the image quality is great. And it's a great um, interchangeable lens, everyday carry camera that's nice and small. The X100 is a nice, even more compact version, but you're restricted to that one lens. This you can use any lens. But of course, if you use a really big lens like the 16 millimeter 1.4, kind of negates the small factor of the camera. Overall, I really like this camera. I don't think I'm gonna sell this. Oh, I forgot to mention the XM1 was also in the journey to me getting this compact everyday carry camera. So I went through the XM1, the X Pro1, and the X-T10 before I decided on the X-E2 as my interchangeable lens everyday carry camera, and then I have the X100 original as my fixed lens everyday camera carry camera. So just for fun on my everyday carry, I'm using old X-Trans sensors just because I like it. And I'm using my X-T3s with the newest, currently about to be superseded by the X-Trans 5 sensor, but the current newest X-Trans 4 sensor on my X-T3s. I use that for my professional work. That's kind of my workflow. That is my thought process in all of these cameras that I've reviewed so far on the channel that have had these older sensors. It's kind of been leading up to me settling on this I think I'm probably going to be reviewing less Fujifilm cameras. There's a little floaty coming in the air. I don't know if you can see that. There's multiple. I don't know if I'm going to review as many Fujifilm cameras. I have a couple things lined up, but um, yeah, good thoughts overall. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment down below. I have a couple reviews up next. I know a lot of people are still watching my Sigma DP2 Classic review. I have the Sigma DP2 Quattro. And that's on my lineup list of things to review up next. I'm between that and this Fujifilm 16mm 1.4 up next. I want to see some comments down below and whoever, whichever of those gets more comments on this video, I will be reviewing next. But I want to switch it up with some music content, the podcast, and some, um, some, some subscriber editing, photo editing videos, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, before then. Um because I just don't want to be doing constant reviews. I'm also using a new, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm ranting so much. This is going to be a long video. I'm also using a Comica, what is it called? <laughs> the Comica CVM WM100. They sent it to me to do a review on, so I'm testing it out right now. I'm not saying any opinions on it right now, but if you like the audio, that's what I'm using this time. I will eventually review that, so I'm going to go into audio reviews. I have some new lights I, I can review. So I'm going to keep it fresh with the content. I hope you've been enjoying. There's a lot of new people on the channel. This was a very ranty outro. Um, I hope you've been enjoying all the, the different flavors of content. I know I'm kind of all over the place, but uh, yeah, I hope you've been enjoying. 
And that's all. I'm done ranting now. I'll see you in the next video, though. I hope. Okay, bye.